Hey, hey Aquarius, happy January and happy 2020. I can't look and believe we're here, but here we are. Happy to see you, very excited to read for you. The way your cards were jumping out was super interesting, so obviously Spirit is jazzed to tell you some stuff too. Before we get into that, I just want to tell you a little bit about something astrological that's going on because Spirit was kind of really hammering home like, hey, let's as above so below so there is some strong energy happening for everybody in in uh the stars right now pluto and saturn are conjuncting meaning they're like right on top of each other right right next to each other and they're both pretty intense planets saturn rules time limits rules responsibilities and pluto is all about change transformation death rebirth extremes okay so when these two come together a Though they have intensity in common, they have little else in common because Saturn wants to keep things the same. Saturn, Saturn wants to keep things in order. And Pluto wants to fucking demolition bullshit old structures and recreate them. So this energy can feel quite mm, at times. <laughs> there are no words. There are only grunts. Um... So I want to validate any intensity and pressure you may be feeling, especially centered around for you specifically. Also, by the way, you can read about this over on my website. I write horoscopes over on writteninthestars.co. So I talked a lot about this conjunction and you can read more about what it's doing for you specifically. But it's happening for you in your house of secrets, the past, and kind of unfinished business. So there's kind of a demolition and a struggle between what is necessary to keep, what helps drive you forward, what helps make you a better person about the way things were, and what parts need to fucking just get, you know, blown out of the goddamn airlock. And if you know the quote, then... Um, let's, let's look at your cards. Let's get into it. I have a feeling we're going to see how this energy wants to play out. We're coming up on your solar return and wow jesus there it is all right deep reflection deep reflection aquarius hmm. some of you have some strong capricorn placements in your chart wow wow definitely like big time okay wow okay Hell yeah, Aquarius. Listen, I think that you are very self-aware. One of the most of the signs. Um, because you do have a gift for objectivity. So you are willing to kind of look at your fears and at your wounds and at your issues. And that serves you in this moment. That is not going to feel like drudgery to the extent that it might sound like it is. And I'm not going to make my case very well when I pick up and show you these cards, but let me explain. You are represented by the Hermit at the center of your reading, crossed by the Three of Swords, which is the wound, the separation or betrayal, or what I'm really feeling is that 12th house energy of it's almost like this Three of Swords is more of a point of reference than anything. Like, what is it that has broken your heart the most in life? And how, specifically, is that keeping you from getting something that you want? Because that Three of Swords is connected to your crowning card, which is the Eight of Swords. And meanwhile, you have this hidden... This hidden aspect of yourself maybe you don't see it yet king of cups listen you're an air sign but you're a water bearer this guy's a water bearer the king of cups is someone who has been through it the king of cups is known as the wounded healer some of you may be literal healers um in various ways could be nurse could be doctor could be uh you know doing reiki or doing something like this in whatever way conventionally or not you help other people explore their feelings and essentially that's what you need to be in charge of doing for yourself this month 
there is a little bit of need for self-focus and self, um, I'm hearing self-generation, which is interesting. I don't know that that's like a phrase people use, um, but what does it mean to generate yourself? It means to be more of yourself. It means to truly be yourself, be in contact with yourself, including the things that you're afraid of and desperately want. Um, like I said, Three of Swords is connected to that Eight of Swords, which is being held back by our own fears. So that wound from the past or that, mm, here's what I'm hearing, that belief <laughs> may be hindering your development. I'm going to say it like that. And I'm not worried about you, Aquarius. Like I said, you have a gift for objectivity. All your cards are saying things are going to be coming into more balance. You've already gotten the ball rolling, is really what I'm hearing. So I want to take this moment to say you should be like proud of yourself. You have been generating yourself. You have been generating motion. You have been recognizing where some things need to go. Like, I need to move on from this, is what I'm hearing. And... I feel that you have, many of you. This is, of course, a general reading, Aquarius, but that's that's the feeling that I'm getting is a lot of you have prepared yourself for, even if I'm afraid, Eight of Swords, I do want this new beginning. I do want to nurture my resources. I do want to nurture my skills. Um, nurture my money, very literally, for some of you. And for some of you, that may be part of the wound. Um... You know, like like parents or, or whatever that were like bad with money or negative about money or wealth or whatever. Some of you might be dealing with that. But spirit, okay, this is deep, but spirit is just use, is using the phrase now like generational trauma. And, you know, some people speak of these in terms of like generational curses, okay? And depending on whatever your belief system might be, one of those might make more sense than the other. That's fine. Spirit's given it to me both ways because spirit doesn't give a shit about what we name things. They give a shit about the reality of things. And there is a generational trauma or generational curse that you can and should, and I don't say should for any other reason than it will make you feel amazing, um, break. And the cycle, um, begin something new, begin a healing cycle. Um, I know, Aquarius, like I said, <laughs> I know you're an air sign and I might just be like making you feel super uncomfortable right now, but that's okay. Um, you're here to come in as the King of Cups this month. And the King of Cups and that Hermit at the center of your reading have a lot in common because they're very deeply reflective self-reflective specifically the hermit is like yes people can come along and help me i could have counselors i could have friends i could have you know family whatever that help me out but ultimately i'm gonna know what i need and i'm going to know better than anybody what i learned from the obstacle course the basic training that is my past so what has it gifted you with gifted okay we could also file that in with huh, tr generational trauma, etc. There are gifts and curses, right, that we get from our, our elders, our ancestors, the people who raised us, the people in our past. And you are here to recycle the shit that you don't want to keep and, and cultivate something that is just yours. That's what I'm hearing. Your skill, your money, your gifts. And I'm not trying to make this super self-focused, but it, it that feels important in January. You may have found yourself, whether you like it or not, in deep reflection. And hey, 12th house, that is all about like going deep and going within. And, and essentially, as the hermit card symbolizes, going places that nobody else can go with you doesn't mean, again, that nobody can help you or support you. 
that's wonderful and I feel that you will have support in that especially looking at your future cards and how things are unfolding um, really looks beautiful but essentially it's kind of like this is a wound only I can heal this is a this is a need only I can transcend my fear of fulfilling it's not that you're the only one who can fulfill it it's that you need to transcend the fear move through the fear of fulfilling it and what that's going to do to you that sounds strange but it's like why do we when you are as clever and like hardworking and and like connected as you are Aquarius then how is it possible that I still don't have this thing that I really want and I crave, but I don't have it? It could only be that I'm standing in my own way. And that is not judgment. That is to say, you are that powerful. Nobody else can stop you. So if something is there, it's only because like, okay, I have a little bit of a fear of this. I have a little bit of fear of what it's going to look like. The what, what are the reverberations through my life when I make all my dreams come true? When I manifest exactly what I want. You have Nine of Cups, which is literally the dreams coming true, the wishes fulfilled card sitting in the potential position. And you have a card that I always think of when I think of Aquarius, the Magician, in the key position. You are a master manifester and you can make your dreams come true and there is a part of you that has a deep sense that it's going to change things when that happens and it's going to hurt some people, it's going to end some things. I know that sounds weird and very intense when I say that. Okay, I'm going to give you just an example, kind of what Spirit's giving me, okay? When you get this wild success and this wealth, when I say that it's going to hurt some people or cause some separations, you know, it's sad and unfortunate, but we talked about your objectivity, so I'm just going to be real. It's like a fact of life. If you look into, like, those stories of people who win the lottery, like, how often does, like, heartbreak fucking follow that? Sometimes, yes, it's like a financial thing where it's like, oh, I had all this money and suddenly I'm destitute because I didn't know how to handle the money. But I'm thinking more in terms of, damn, like, family members and things like that turn on each other because suddenly there was this tremendous gift and this tremendous win and somehow it created strife. You want to sort through this stuff within yourself so that you don't have to experience the externalization of your inner schism or strife about it. You know what I'm saying? It's a super intense Aquarius. <laughs> you're healing something really big and important. And you're giving yourself, I feel, access to something that you really want by healing yourself and by looking at your fear of greatness. That's just how I'm hearing it. Because you are you are the magician. You are somebody who can synthesize amazing things. And I think that you know this about yourself, that like people notice you, that you have these amazing ideas. You know, Aquarius is like the mad scientist and genius of the Zodiac. And I'm not stroking your ego. Like, I'm... Uh, it is what it is. You stand out. And maybe somebody in your deep past made you afraid of standing out or made you feel shitty for your natural ability to stand out. We're done with that shit. It's time to cultivate your skills, your talents, to be recognized, to be, I'm hearing signed for some of you, so it could be contracts being offered to you. Just saying. <laughs> Take it easy, focus on self-healing, focus on to the extent that you can, not going to extremes, Aquarius. You know, you're quite an extreme sign, you have strong beliefs, you know, we think of you as cool and detached and aloof, but anybody who knows you knows that your mind is teeming, like teeming with thoughts, teeming with ideas, there's like, whoo, there's a lot there. Um, I think it's a pretty sweet deal to hear that your dreams can come true when you focus on healing and taking care of yourself. In multiple ways I'm hearing this, so for some of you it's very literally physical. Like that temperance card is, back to the basics, get sleep, drink enough water, eat enough 
eat the right things. Like make sure you're getting the nutrients that you need. Make sure you're getting, you know, your 15-20 minutes of vitamin D every day. Take care of you. I'm hearing cradle you. So if you cradle you, you cradle your ideas, you cradle your skills, you cradle your resources, and you create more of them. When you allow yourself to be as you are meant to be, Aquarius, which is free and wild and unique and impossible not to notice, your dreams come true. So whoever it is that made you afraid of acknowledging your talents or made you feel like you weren't enough in some way, whether or not they were a nice person doesn't matter. They were not right about you. And you need to see you objectively. You need to look at your own wounds, your own issues, as well as your gifts and your skills and your strengths. Objectively. Focus on your money. That's also going to be beneficial right now. Back to the basics. Keep it simple. Because you want to keep your mind, your that Eight of Swords, the, this is how they're giving it to me, that Eight of Swords is static in between you catching your magician signals. So that fear is interrupting your genius signals, your Doc Brown 21 gigawatts stuff, okay? So some of you interrogate that fear and find out how unreal it is because it may just take that objective conversation with yourself to get clear. And for some of you, the King of Cups could represent someone that is very kind, very connected to their emotions and gets you. If you have that person in your life, speak to that person. They could be a friend, they could be a family member, they could be a counselor, somebody who, again, sees you and can help you sort through that stuff and make you feel safe. There's a lot of healing happening for you in January and some big potential wish fulfillment when you get past your fears and back in your manifesting magician fucking boots, okay? So, I don't know why boots. Maybe some of you really like boots. <laughs> so what is it, Aquarius? What are you trying to create and what might be standing in your way? If you feel like exploring that in the comments below, I'm sure it would benefit other Aquarians. And, um, you know, I like to get down there and give some advice when I can too. So if you got it, let me know. I love you, Aquarius. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. I hope that it's really helpful for you. This was a really deep message this month. That was pretty, it's pretty great though. It's like, it's intense, but it's fucking amazing. Things are getting into flow for you. I'm excited to see what the rest of 2020 brings. Much love to you, Aquarius. Thank you again for being here. And if I don't see you in a video before then, then I will see you in your February reading. Bye-bye.